I'm gonna show you how to make rain like in this render here in Blender. So first, let's create the actual rainfall. To do that, add an icosphere, stretch it out to be shaped like a droplet and give it a glass material with an IR of 1.35. Then add a plane, move it up so that the camera can't see it and scale it up to cover the smallest area possible while still covering everything that needs to receive rain. The reason being performance. Then add a particle system, switch the mode to emitter and set the particle amount to something like 600,000. I'm covering a fairly small area, so you might have to go higher if you're covering a large area. After that, set frame start and end to the start and end frames of your scene and tweak the lifetime so that particles will just barely make it below the ground. The reason, again, being performance. Then go to the render section, set render as to object, the scale to 0.01 and the scale randomness to 0.5. After that, select the raindrop as the object to instance and scale it so that the instances are about 5 millimeters in diameter. Then bake. If this isn't enough rain and your computer can't handle any more particles, then I'll later show you a more performant way to add some more. Next, since it's raining, we'll have to make make all materials in the scene look wet. So first I multiply the roughness with the noise texture and to make it look wet enough you'll have to multiply the result of that by 0.2. In my opinion that still doesn't look quite right. So lastly you'll also want to go into the code section, slide the weight to 1 and set the IOR to 1.35. And that looks very wet. So let's move on to adding some heavier liquid buildup. But before we do, if you don't want to create any of the following two node setups and also want a geometry node setup that creates the rainfall from the first step much more easily then they're available on my Gumroad. Link in description. But let's get back to the liquid buildup. So duplicate the ground and subdivide it heavily. Make sure to delete any part of this object that the camera can't see because the high resolution will again be quite the performance challenge. Then go to the geometry nodes workspace and create a new setup. After that add a set position and position node. Then add a Warner texture and set the detail to 1.4. Add in a noise texture set the scale to 1.42 and plug the Warner texture into the vector of the noise texture. This will give us a nice ripple shape, especially once we pass it through a color ramp set to ease, which you'll want to tweak like this. Lastly, plug it into the Z socket of a combined XYZ node and plug the result of that into the offset socket of the set position node from earlier. To control the height of the ripples, just add another multiply node in between the color ramp and the combined XYZ node, which I found multiplying by 0.01 gave the best results. The problem now is that while we have a nice ripple, it doesn't move at all. So to fix that, add a vector math node in between the position and the Warner texture and type hashtag frame divided by 20 into the Z of the second socket. And with that, it moves at a pretty good speed. To speed it up, decrease what you divide it by and to slow it down, increase what you divide it by. But that's it for the liquid buildup. So now let's move on to arguably the most important part, the splashes. First, we need an image of a splash, which you can either simulate a splash and use that, or you can just use a stock image of a splash. I choose the latter option because it's much easier. So import your image using the images display insert on. I put the one I used in the description and roughly cut out the shape of the splash. Once done, place the origin at the base of the splash. For the material, just do something like this. Only thing to note is this hue saturation value node, which you may need to match the splash's colors to the rest of the scene. With that done, the plan to distribute and animate them is as follows. Using geometry nodes, we will scale the splashes up and down and each time the scale reaches near zero, we will change the seed of the distribution. To do that, create a new geometry node setup, add in a simulation zone and a distribute points on faces node. Then plug the base geometry into the mesh input. After that, drag out a connection from this socket right here and plug it into the seed. Also, don't forget to plug the input that we just created into its corresponding output at the end of the simulation zone. Then add a value node, plug it into the density and set it to something like 4.5. This can be tweaked later on to match the amount of rain. Then to instance the splash model on those points, we'll have to add in an instance on points as well as an object info node. In the latter, just select the splash and plug the geometry output into the instance socket. Then, of course, also plug in the points as well as outputting the result of the instance on points node at the end of the simulation zone. And with that, let's work on animating the scale up and down. So add a math node, plug the top socket into the simulation zone input and the result into the simulation zone output. Then add another value node, set it to 2 and plug it into the bottom socket. After that, add another math node, set it to sign and plug in the output of the first math node. Then plug the output of that into the scale socket of the instance on points node and multiply it by 0.05. Then you'll want to adjust it until the splashes are about 15 millimeters high. And now if we hit play, they splash up and scale down nicely. So now we can move on to changing the seed every time the old splashes disappear. To do that, add in a compare node and set it to less than. Then plug the output of the sign into the A socket and set the B socket to 0.05. After that, add a switch node, plug the output of the compare node into the switch, set the false to 0 
zero and the true to one. Lastly, add a math node in between the seed simulation zone input and output and plug the result of the switch node into the bottom socket. And finally, the splashes switch position. Problem though, they're completely synchronous. So to fix that, select the entire simulation zone and everything within it and create a node group by pressing Ctrl G. Then plug the input for the sine wave thing, this input here, into the group input to be able to tweak it later on. This is important so that we can offset the scaling up and down motion and make it appear more random. Also plug that same node group input into the seed starting point of the simulation zone. Furthermore, I would recommend naming all the inputs, but that's optional. Then exit the node group and duplicate it about 12 times. Then plug the geometry, speed and density value nodes into all of them and vary the seed for each node group as well. Important here is to make sure the seed is accepting a floating point value because else the sine wave won't get offset. Then join all the outputs together. I forgot, do output the output of the simulation zone at the end of the node group. That's important. And lastly, join in the base geometry as well. And that's done. You can now add this node group to everything you need to get affected by the splashes. But what if you're in a situation like me where you still don't have enough rain and your computer is already at its limits. Well, you can use a pre-made video of some rain and import it into the scene on a plane. Then to make it blend in properly, you'll have to scale it to the proper size, give the plane some thickness, recalculate the normals and use the rain texture to mix between a transparent and glass material, which in motion blends in pretty nicely. But that's it. You should now have some good looking rain. Thanks for watching.